Hello, today we will talk about conducting in-depth qualitative interviews for a phenomenological research. Phenomenology is a form of qualitative research that focuses on the study of an individual's lived experiences with the, within his or her social world. It is largely grouped into two types. First is descriptive, that is to describe the lived experience without giving meaning to it. And second is interpretive, that is about revealing and interpreting implicit meanings in a lived experience. In this presentation, I will not go in detail about phenomenological research and my focus will be the in-depth interviews in phenomenological research. However, you may find two related videos on my YouTube channel with the title of Social Constructionism and Phenomenology. Uh, and you can browse through my YouTube channel. Before learning how to conduct an in-depth interview, we must know what we want to know about lived experience. Yes, you have a research question that is well formulated following a proper guideline. You can have a look at research question video on my YouTube channel to seek further information about writing a research question. Here, let us see what are the important information that we generally try to find out while learning about someone's lived experience. Although it is related to what is your research question, but here I am giving you a general idea. To contextualize all the information that you intend to collect as a data in a phenomenological research, there are a few general but important and interconnected questions that you must keep in mind. These questions begins and ends with a what. Of course, when you will end this, you will have a lot of interrelated information about the phenomena under study. First question is, what is happening? Second question, when it is happening? Third question, where it is happening? Fourth question, how is it happening? Fifth question, who are the social actors? I mean the people directly or indirectly involved in this phenomena. And sixth question, why is it happening? After getting the answers in your interview, you will be able to give a thick description and plausible interpretation of the phenomena. However, it depends a lot on how deeply you are able to find answers to these types of questions during the interview. As a general idea, if you enlist the purpose of your interview, you may find that you want to know about the beliefs, thoughts, feelings, opinions, perceptions and experiences of the participants. Now to talk about conducting in-depth interview, I will begin with the clinical interviews that psychologists conduct to diagnose certain behavioral problems or disorders. You know that a psychologist must have in-depth and accurate information about the client's personal and social world to diagnose the issue. Hence, the psychologists are trained to conduct in-depth interviews. Through the interviews, they use their skills for diagnostic purpose. However, the information I am providing about qualitative interview is quite relatable to clinical interviews. We know that in-depth interviews are used as a primary assessment tool in clinical investigations. And for this reason, the qualitative interviewing skills are seen as essential in a counselor's training. Hence, a psychologist is trained to obtain accurate and relevant information with a rich insight. And this is only possible when the interviewer is able to see the unseen, listen the unheard, and can give voice to his or her client. For this purpose, unstructured or semi-structured interviews are preferred with open-ended questions and spontaneous probing. In this sense, you can see a similarity between clinical and qualitative interview, as in phenomenological research. Besides relevant disciplinary knowledge and skills, interviewers' communication and interpersonal skills are very important. On the other hand, all the ethical considerations and moral guidelines are an essential part of the interview process that help you to design the complete protocol 
of the interview before proceeding further. Okay, now let's see what do you get if you are able to conduct a successful interview. Since you are having a face-to-face -face interaction with the participants, you can get the observational cues regarding the body language of the participants and the silences during the conversation. If you are keen enough to listen well to your participants with spontaneous but relevant probes, it will ensure flow and continuity. And later, you will get enough data for accurate description and logical interpretation of the lived experience. To conduct a good interview, you must be a good listener. Good listening is more than remaining quiet during conversation. Being a good listener means you are curious and you can show your curiosity through your body language and verbal non-verbal expressions during the conversation. The participant who volunteers himself or herself must feel engaging and connected to you. It is important that he or she feels your attention and curiosity. Moreover, to present your active and attentive visibility during the conversation, an appropriate and timely use of what, how, when and why questions is the backbone of conversational interviews for phenomenological research. Well, for a psychologist and for a researcher, it is really important to know their client or the participant. Besides considering other demographic information and cultural background of the participants, I recommend to have an informal dialogue with the participants during the pre-interview meetings. This meeting can give you an idea, in fact, a useful idea about the participants. For example, you may find out whether your participants are shy or hesitant, are they comfortable with the topic of the study, what they may be interested to share, what they may not want or like to share, what types of probing they need to open up, is there any gender or age related issues that can disturb interpersonal communication? What type of questions may be unpleasant or uncomfortable for them? There may be several other things that the interviewer can note during pre-interview meetings that may be helpful in knowing the participants before conducting a formal interview. Okay, and now let's see a general format that a psychologist may use to conduct a clinical interview. This illustration may give you an idea how you can gradually dig deep the information you want to get about the lived experiences of the participants. A psychologist first pay attention to the identifying information that includes the information about gender, socioeconomic status, family and other relevant information. Then the psychologist will be interested in knowing the psychological or social problems to get diagnostic cues. Afterwards, while maintaining a flow of the conversation, the psychologist will discover the other information that can help him to record the family, relationship, education, work, developmental and medical history of the client. And this information is necessary to understand the background of the problem. Then during the mental status examination, Psychologist uses his or her skills to conduct a screen evaluation of the emotional and cognitive functioning, functioning of the client. Here, the psychologist uses client's verbal, non-verbal behavior, thoughts, moods, memory and other observational cues to make a preliminary judgment about the diagnosis. Well, even though you see this is a format of clinical interview, but you can note down the flow and continuity of the process that ensures the in-depth information about the client. And that is equally important for an in-depth interview in phenomenological research. Particularly, in phenomenological research, you are supposed to investigate the whole phenomena with a ground-up approach and that requires rich description and in-depth insight of the participant's social world. Hence, the options to use your previous theoretical knowledge to label the participant experience is limited and may be problematic as well. 
and all you have to do is to rely on the data to make contextualized inferences. Alright, now in this slide you see a general protocol of an in-depth qualitative interview. And you see that all the steps are connected and continue to maintain the flow of conversation for in-depth information. You will start with a friendly introduction that is helpful for rapport building and maintaining trust. Of course, if you have conducted pre-interview meetings, this introductory session will be more friendly and open. Next, you will open up the talk asking about everyday life and trying to give space to the participants so that they can tell you more about their life and their family, work and other events of interest. At this stage, you will be interested to listen to your participants' overall social and family life. Then you will use this opening dialogue to ask specific questions related to the problem or the issues or the lived experiences that you are studying. This will be the significant part of the interview because now you are trying to focus on your research questions and getting required information as deep as it can be. During this whole process, you should, you should use relevant probing to get the participants understanding of the phenomena you are investigating. Do remember that I have already mentioned that your body language and verbal nonverbal probes must present you as an attentive, curious and keen listener. Last part of this conversational interview is a follow-up session where you talk about the information you have got and try to seek accuracy and remove any ambiguities that you may have during the process. On these slides, you can see some examples of the direct and indirect probes. For example, you can ask during the discussion, what do you mean when you say, what happened then, can you tell me more? To make these probes more interesting, you can add some indirect probes, such as if you want more information, you can say, aha, that is interesting, can you tell me more about it? Similarly, you can use expressions of empathy while listening a painful experience, such as, I can see it was difficult for you. Or adding some non-verbal expressions, such as, oh, that is sad. I can feel how painful it might be for you. You can also use mirroring techniques or repeating that the participant, whatever the participant said, such as, so you were 19 when you had your first child. All these probing techniques add value to your conversation, both in terms of effective mutual interaction and getting in-depth and open information. Well, I hope by now you have a better idea how to conduct an in-depth qualitative interview for phenomenological research. Now in the end, I will provide some useful tips that will surely help you to conduct good interviews. First is repo building. That is the ability to quickly create a positive, relaxed and mutually respectful interaction with the participant. You can follow these simple things to build a positive and respectful understanding with your participant. First, be friendly and smile whenever and wherever it is required to connect to the pleasant talk with a non-verbal expression. Always use pleasant tone of voice while asking questions and probing. Show a relaxed body language. Be humble and don't talk and listen with an expressionless face. Do not emphasize on your perspective. Remember, you are supposed to listen and understand participants' version of the things that they are experiencing and they are sharing with you. Do not be harsh. You should be tolerant and patient. There might be something that you can feel against your beliefs or opinions, but you are not here to convince your point of view or argue other subjective words. Also remember, you are a researcher and not a preacher or a so-called motivational speaker in this conversation. Another challenge you may face is to deal with people with different personalities or emotional states. In that case, you should be able to quickly adjust your style and tone according to the individual differences situations and the state of mind that you may experience during interview. 
this is a skill that you must learn. You must know how to tone down heightened emotions such as when a participant starts crying. Adopting to each individual may require softening the way you mention sensitive issues, adjusting your tone of voice to be more sober and positive, or exhibiting increased warmth and social distance. Well, I must add here that if you think your topic of the study is sensitive and can trigger emotional pain or there is a risk, even if it is minimum, you must be aware of how to handle it. And you must include your strategies and participation uh, information sheet that you share with the participants. For example, it may include counseling services that that may be offered in this case. Last but not least, it is very important to understand and emphasize the participant's perspective. So while being against listener, uh, it means that you are able to demonstrate neutrality and acceptance through your body language, probing, interaction and empathy and polite behavior. Remember, this is also a way to give voice to the participants, giving them confidence to talk about their lived experience. You give importance to whatever they share and they must be, that must be visible in your face-to-face -face interaction. Thank you for watching. I will come up with another video on preparing and validating interview guide for semi-structured interviews. Stay in touch by subscribing my YouTube channel Be Qualitative and you can also read the video scripts on childhoodreview.com. Thank you.